Welcome to Discover Health, a White Mountain Perspective. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Barella. Today's program, I suspect, will be new for most of you in our audience. We're going to talk about a program called ACES. And while most of you probably have never heard of this, it is a very, very important concept for all of us, parents, grandparents, police, firemen, actually everyone in our community. And in order to talk about this topic, which has been a recent symposium up here on the White Mountains, we've asked Kate Dobler, the Regional Director of First Things First, and a longtime proponent and champion for early childhood development. She, as her role in First Things First, has promoted an incredible amount of programs up here on the mountain. And I would say welcome, Kate. Thank you, Tom. It's good to see you. <laughs> well, it is good to see you, too, as, <laughs> as um, an ex-First Things First person. <laughs> but you're here today to talk not so much about First Things First, but to ACES. Right. And um, I suppose our audience really does not understand anything about ACES unless they were one of the hundred or so people that were at that community forum um, this summer. So tell us a little bit about what ACES stands for mm -hmm. and what it really encompasses sure. because this is important. Sure. So ACES is an acronym in the alphabet soup of the world right now. It stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. And it refers to a body of research that was conducted in California at Kaiser Permanente Health Plan um, in coordination with the Centers for Disease Control about 20 years ago. And it looks at the early childhood experiences of a set of patients within that health plan. And it, it created a questionnaire that got to what kind of things did they experience growing up as a very young child and then correlated those experiences to their later health outcomes, mental health outcomes, and other um, social indicators of well-being. And what the body of research really identified is that there's a significant correlation predictive correlation between the kinds of experiences the child has, particularly before the age of five, and their later outcomes in life. And along, particularly along 10 specific factors that really rose to the top, if a child has experienced sort of three of those factors that leads to a greater significance of negative health out health outcomes, um, negative uh, you know lower income, lower college and graduation rates, lower employability, sort of etc. A lot of social issues on of top of health so issues. That's right, because we know if you don't feel good. You know, if you have a toothache, it's, it's impossible to concentrate. And so that's just a tooth, right? So if you're a child that lives in a home that doesn't have enough food and you don't know that you're going to have dinner or that you're going to have food for the weekend, if you live in a home where um, you have witnessed domestic violence, particularly your mother having been hit by another adult in your home, if you live in a home or grew up in a home where you were the victim of emotional or sexual abuse. Those are very traumatic experiences and they have a cumulative, predictive, negative effect to later outcomes. That's what the research body sort of identified and showed over 35, more than 35,000 patients. It's a very large sample. The thing to remember is that this sample were patients who were um, middle class and employed and belonged to a health plan. Well, that's typical of Kaiser. It is. And, and so what we need to remember about this research is that it, it's about us, for, for one. It's about the people that live in communities like ours who are working in part of a health plan. It's not about them or those people over there. It is about you and I and the people that we see every day in Walmart. That's the first thing to remember. The next thing to remember is that um, our communities and our families um, 
because of the demographics of this region, experience more stresses at the community level. We have a lower um, employment rates. We have a high unemployment rate. We have a low high school graduation rate comparatively to other communities. We have a low median income, very high rates of poverty, and we know the challenges associated with that. So you have to keep those sort of community level realities of, of, of our life here on the mountain in mind. When you look at the ACEs research as a body, there are sort of two tipping points where the predictive correlation increases at three and at seven. Okay, and we're going right. to show this ACES we tree um, uh, on the on the screen so that people get an idea sure. of all the different areas that you've just been talking sure, about. Sure, so, sure. So go into your. I didn't mean to. Nope, there, that's okay. We just need to have that that visual reference. up there so you can see. There's sort of this is called a pair of ACES. This tree. That, that we can see. The branches are, are what you see. Those are realities of life that we see. We see maternal depression. We know that we screen for that when mothers deliver a baby. We do a postpartum depression screen and now we're looking at um, both mothers and fathers experience postpartum um, depression. And we look at um, the numbers of children who have been removed from homes and placed into the care of the Superior Court um, and Department of Child Safety by looking at emotional and sexual abuse, physical abuse, neglect. We look at divorce rates. We, we collect that data as part of our census every 10 years. But the federal government collects and has for a long time. We have a, a very high rate of mental illness and substance abuse in this community. We know that. We're aware of that, and, and that plays into the experiences that kids have growing up. We do have a population of families who um, have a parent who is in jail. Um, either the child witnessed the removal of the parent, or um, they're living in a home where one or or both of their parents. And we have a significant population of grandparents raising kids because of that. Because of that, correct. And um, homelessness, um, is it, it's it's a very broad sort of descriptor that that plays into a lot of experiences our families have multiple generations living in one home grandparents raising grandchildren um, families that, who leave and then come back home because they couldn't um, find a job they lost their job and so they're mo they're moving home we have um, a significant number of high school students and sort of 16 to 24 year old um, young adults who are couch surfing or going from house to house to house. Right? <laughs> Interesting term. Right? Yeah, couch, a couch, <laughs> couch surfing. surfing. Um, and there's actually a federal stream um, dedicated to um, support those students that, that goes through schools, um, particularly to make sure that children have enough to eat and have a place to live and have clothes to wear, although the funding streams are very small. Um, but that is a, an indicator that we keep track of. Those are things we can see and we can count. Right? They're and, tangible. And actually, there's a questionnaire that's available there that, is. that we're going to talk about, the number of ACEs yep. risk factors like yep. that are on this thing. Absolutely. And, it, and, and, so, and that reference will be at, on um, a slide at the end yep. of this. Uh, this program yep. and we don't want to talk about them in particular yep. <laughs> but the more of these things that are present the greater the likelihood and it's not a f you know for sure you're doomed but the greater the likelihood that you will have more challenges as an adult in your mental health physical health social well-being it doesn't mean that absolutely life is going to be terrible for you and that you won't succeed so well, my I hope story, not. my story, on a good day, I have probably eight aces on that <laughs> questionnaire. And as you've just described, I'm fairly well put together and I'm, and I'm building a significant system. So it's not a, you know, one to one, you're doomed, but it means that in order to be successful, Given the experience as a young child, you really need to have that one person who can pull you through and make sure that you know you are valued. And we're going to talk about that. And to support resilience and protective factors. And that's really the value of the research. The research really is 
a formulation that there needs to be resources Absolutely. available to these people. Absolutely, and, to and everyone. And that's part of the value of this of this research is that it's about us and it's about everyone. It, it's important to understand that it's real people. It's real people. It's not them. It's not them. Okay. Whoever you want to define them okay. as, it's, it's us. Now you, you were measuring two things. Were you talking about the bottom of this graph? I, I was. So the bottom of this graph is the roots. So you don't see this. These are community level um, sort of realities. How safe is your neighborhood? Um, how connected is your community? What kind of feelings of discrimination do you feel in your community or in your family? What's the quality of your housing in your neighborhood? Do you have parks where you can play? Or do you feel unsafe where you live? Sort of those community level realities that you don't count. Nobody takes a ticker count, but it's the feel of your community, which gets to um, how what is your social network? How connected are you with the people you live with? And how connected and available are those resources in your community that would provide members of that community those protective factors to be the best that they can be, to thrive and succeed? And that's where the magic of this research comes in. Wow, that's, that's impressive because there's a lot in the national news about the character mm -hmm. of communities, the, that risk factor just from the character of community and profiling mm -hmm. and stuff that we mm -hmm. see in, um, mm -hmm. in our national and our national news mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the nice thing about this is your concept is that this is like the pediatric concept of it takes a village to raise a child. It absolutely is, it takes a village and those kids are our responsibility they're yours and mine wow right? very very in, in, interesting so uh, basically it's it's not only a family issue Correct. it's a milieu issue it is it's what we immerse ourselves in and 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 i kind of view it as what we want the character of our community sure. to be absolutely i i think that's a great analogy and in my in my mind <laughs> i'm seeing these concentric circles which you and i've talked about for a very long time but at the very center is that baby who we all want to grow up to be strong and healthy and happy and successful and a productive member of our community that's our hope and desire for every child that's born wherever that child is and in all of the concentric circles growing bigger around that child then need to be connected so that that child living in the context of their family within their community within their school within their church within the larger systems of the community all need to be connected and integrated to support that baby and and it's that visual that gets to understanding who our resources are, where the supports are to support families, to support that baby, which really gets to, it, those kids are our kids, and they're our responsibility as our community. And, and you, in your role as First Things First, for the last, I think, 11 years 11 now? years, 11 years it or now, not. you've yeah. been in charge of our regional council, yeah. really recognize how important it is to give children a good start yes absolutely and and part of the milieu is the community but really a big piece of this aces risk factors are also family which are directly controllable where the milieu in the in the community sometimes is a lot more difficult to deal with because you have to deal with the political issues? Well, either, uh, politics is the game that we all play, whether we like to or not. But, but yes, if we think about children live within a family and they have parents, and as a, as a system, our outcome should be parents who feel supported, who have access to the tools they need to do the very best job they can, particularly before kids turn five. And your pediatrician, you know, that's when brains develop, right? So the more we can provide consistent, stable, safe, nurturing environments for children before they turn five, the stronger foundation they will have 
for later. And, and if we think about that through this lens of adverse childhood experiences, that means that we need to first understand what the reality is for families. And, and we do. We have some data that talks about that. Let's go through the data. Sure. How significant is the ACEs problem? Pretty significant, Tom. Pretty, yeah. Thanks. So, you know, that's kind of a softball question <laughs> right there. But Well, it's important for people to realize that we're just not talking. I mean, it's a significant issue. It's a huge and, issue. And it, there are 10 variables that are in the questionnaire and Primary. in your tree. Yep. Primary. And, yep. and the more of these variables that mm -hmm. are present in your child's life. Mm -hmm. Or any child's life. Any child's life, the more significant risk is. Correct. So the question is, how big is the risk? How, so, many, how many people have an ACEs, an, a, so, an adverse child event, in their lifetime. So, so there's a significant body of data that's collected fairly regularly across the country, right? There are ACE connection forums nationally, everywhere. internationally, statewide, they're everywhere. They're free. Because the CDC is the involved CDC with this program. The CDC is involved in this, right. Okay. And, and so in Arizona, Arizona is one of the states in the nation with the highest percentage of people in general who have experienced adverse childhood experiences in Arizona. Within Arizona, if you look at the county level, right, Navajo County is one of the counties with the highest percentage of people who have experienced five or more adverse childhood five experiences. Of, five of them. Five, right? It actually, Navajo County is the third highest in the state. Right. Third and highest. And so, Back to the beginning of our segment, you were talking about my role with First Things First. So I'm the regional director for the Navajo Apache region, which is the non-tribal portions of Navajo and Apache counties. If you look at that segment of the geography of the state, we are still one of the highest sectors of the state with children who have greater than three adverse childhood experiences greater than the state of Arizona as a whole. That's an important distinction. It is. South of I-40. Within the region, right. Yes. And if you look at both counties together, significantly higher than the state. And we are, as we know, Navajo and Apache counties are among the poorest counties nationally. Correct. Correct? Yes. And we know that poverty encompasses many of those factors that contribute to an adverse childhood experience. It's a significantly stressful environment for families to be in if they don't have enough money. That means parents are more stressed. We know that divorce rates are higher in communities with high rates of poverty because of stress. We know that unemployment is a reality here, and we know the stress factors that are related to that. We know that these communities in, in this region have a significant substance abuse issue. We have a new opioid treatment clinic opening in Sholo Correct. with federal money because of the prevalence of that challenge. And we know that substance abuse and opioid use disorder is a disorder in the brain. We know that. And it has a significant amount of stress factors for families associated with it. That's the reality we live in. And so if we know that, then we need to begin to intentionally decide as a community of people who live here, what are we going to do about that so that our children don't grow up with that being their only experience, but grow up feeling supported and protected and, and become the resilient kids that we all want those babies to be. That's what a community does with this information. And I know that uh, it was interesting when we had the ACEs Forum here yeah. earlier in the summer of 2019, because yeah. you never know when people are going to be watching right. the show. Right, right. That was very well attended. It was. There the, were the meeting hall was almost full. full. Yep, there were close to 150 people in person, and we had uh, Rob Hefner um, did a live remote, and and there were over 600 people that were tuned in listening online to those presentations from Dr. Jill Stam and then Dominic Capella from um, University of New Mexico. And the, and the frame of that event was. Um, 
It's called based on the book in age eight, but really presented a framework to look at how communities can create action plans across 10 sectors of the community that would get to eliminating trauma. And, and it's interesting that you mentioned the book, Anna, age eight, Correct. because that book is available free it is. online. <clears throat> and it actually is a very interesting story of this little girl right. and some of the issues that she went through in early childhood right. that led to essentially adverse childhood events Correct. and and the support systems and, and stuff that were present in her life. Correct. And uh, although we don't have a reference to that, if you look up and at age eight online, uh, there are several organizations that will let you download the book right. free. Correct. Okay, so there's a lot of data. I mean, obviously, and, 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 and I think one thing that people need to recognize is that some of the some of the adverse childhood events are very subtle. For example, shouting at your child giving them profanity to, to degrade them and stuff. And the statistics showed 35% of kids are exposed to parents screaming at their children. and On a regular basis. On a regu so yep. this isn't just, you know, Once. mom lost it, because I do that on a regular basis. But <laughs> if your reality <laughs> is that what you most often hear from your parent following this analogy is it negative. is negative. It, that changes your own concept of yourself. That traumatic, I mean, th these, are, these are not, you know, uh, obviously if you are sexually abused once, that's enough. It's a different but issue, yeah. If you're yelled at constantly every day and you don't hear affirming um, comments and um, descriptors about yourself and you are not... In, a, in an environment where you are led to believe that you matter, that, that it's not going to leave a mark on your face, but it does on the very essence of your being. And that is an adverse childhood. Yeah, and, I've, and I've told parents for a long time, you can't criticize if you can't compliment. And, and, and Edward Christopherson, one of the old, old time guys like me, uh, had a motto for two year olds that uh, uh, catch them being good and tell them that they're good. You know, it brings me back to sitting in your office about 10 years ago when you said, you know, my wife Roxy tells me to catch them being good, so I'm going to catch you being good, Kate, running this council. Okay. Well, that's a great we won't, memory. We won't do that years ago when we were on the council. But but now from a community standpoint, because we're sure. getting close to time, if you, yeah. if you would believe that, um, <laughs> What can what can a community do? Sure. What should we do next? Sure. So a couple of things. First, connect with Allison Hefner, who is um, managing a local, um, doing some project management for a local effort to um, begin to understand through the Navajo County uh, map, the mobilizing and planning for partnerships, and understanding our community health assessment and community health improvement plan through the lens of these 10 sectors so that we can use the data we know, the partners we know that are already coming together and begin to use this framework of the 10 sectors to connect work that's already happening, things that we are already doing and understand how they support a trauma-free community. So connect with Allison Hefner. Um, second, I would encourage you to um, think about your own work, your own project, and how could what you already do connect to the work of the Community Health Improvement Plan. So they, each individual organization absolutely. tries to become involved with the community rather than being siloed rather in the community? Rather than being siloed. Mm -hmm. We really want to, I mean, you know, my mission for a decade has been we don't need to be in silos, but this provides a framework that we can all um, hook on to, if, if you will, with the work that we're already doing. Not asking people to do more or different work, but align it and understand what your partners are doing so that we're not duplicating each other's work and we can create a, a consistent, cohesive community. And we're gonna do that, right? We are. We are. We are. Because first things first, and the map, coalition um, and it and it's people working together 
with people. Correct. It's that, about people with relationships, and right. it's about knowing the people in your community and building trust between people in the community, trusting that we are all at the table to see the reality of kids and families being safe and not having to experience trauma. I'm going to try to summarize this a little bit. Early childhood events are important for the lifelong development of the total person. It's interesting to me when I looked at the ACEs data that the increased number of increased childhood events mm -hmm. increased the risk for developing smoking, Correct. developing alcohol abuse, developing drugs and IV drug use, impressively heart disease, which I did not expect, okay. and suicide. Okay. And in some cases, the risk goes up 20-fold. Correct. 20 fold just by having more adverse childhood events. Yes. Now, you've given us a good start in recognizing that we have to get started. It's a community wide effort, it's cooperation that's important. Okay. And I'm going to say to our audience as we're out of time that the references that appear on the last at the end of this program are where you can look for the CDC data. You can actually get the questionnaire to measure your own ACEs if, if you like. But the important thing to recognize is that we as a community recognize that adverse childhood events are not good for the development of our youth. And the only way to prevent this is to become involved in our community and in our children. And we thank Kate for coming and giving her perspective as a person who's been involved with this for the last decade and an important part of our community. And I thank you for watching and watch your children grow healthy. Thank you.